Recently, I have been working on a web project that requires high-quality 3D effects. I came across something interesting on Sketchfab, and I was curious about how lighting and numerous textures, or materials, are combined on textures. So, I found some methods, and I will share the best method with you. I created a small scene with many models and materials, and all the materials are procedural. These procedural textures can control the direction and coverage area of dust. In the end, I baked the lighting and these procedural textures onto the textures. You can also freely allocate the number of textures. Below, I will show you this process. Let's get started. But before that, let's discuss these procedural textures. If you are familiar with procedural textures, you can skip this part. My scenes are composed of cubes, much like assembling Lego. The basic element is a brick that can be covered with dust. Use Ctrl plus T to quickly create a texture link. You need to enable the Node Wrangler add-in to use this shortcut. Replace the image texture with a noise texture. You may notice some stretching because the texture distribution is based on UV. Change UV to object to achieve a better result. Create a color ramp and connect it to base color and roughness to use this noise to control color and roughness. Before roughness, create another color ramp to more precisely control roughness. Then, create another shader to make dust. The linking of nodes is basically the same as before, so I skip this process. At this point I have two shaders. Shift plus left mouse click on nodes to quickly check the nodes result. Use the mix shader node to combine these two shaders. And adjust the factor to control the ratio of the two shaders. I use the model's local space z-axis to control the distribution range of the two shaders. Add a color ramp to control the virtuality and solidity of the boundary. By adjusting the z-axis location, I can control the depth of dust coverage. Adjusting rotation controls the direction of dust coverage. Next, add some variation to the boundary. Make the boundary more distinct. Add a new noise texture and add it to the z-axis of the model. Adjust the position of the boundary to see the result. Okay, these are the basic elements of my entire scene. In order to bake these results on texture, the model must have UV. So I split the UV for this cube. I duplicated two cubes, merged them, to adjust the overall texture result. Separate one of them and duplicate the material to adjust it individually. This is how I completed the scene model production. Return to the scene and start the baking process. Switch to the Cycles Renderer. I am using an add-in called Simple Bake, which is linked below the video. Find the version suitable for you and install it. It consists of two main tabs, P1 
PBR bake and cycles bake. The difference lies in the output textures, and PBR bake includes an additional channel combiner designed for game engines. In this video, I am using cycles bake. The setting presets can save baking settings, and the add-in is versatile, not limited to the current usage. In the bake objects section, you can add the objects that need to be baked. I divided my scene into two parts for baking twice, allowing two textures to represent the entire scene. Select all models of the house and click add. I will bake the house this time. Cycles bake refers to what type of result needs to be baked. There are many data types available for baking inside. Combined refers to baking the combined result. Special bakes include some special baking results that you can choose according to your needs. Texture settings involve setting the size for baking and output textures. Bake margin is the size of UV expansion. I choose a smaller size and set the type to extend for better control. Otherwise, too many expanded pixels may cover adjacent UVs like this. If your texture is semi-transparent, you need to check this option. I need to bake the entire house's texture onto one texture, so I select multiple objects to one texture set. Here you can give a name to the texture. At this point, I need to check the UV of the entire house model to ensure there is no overlap. It's a little rough expanding UV like this. Good UV can get better baking results. Export settings can be configured to export textures and models after baking. If you choose to export, it will create a folder in the same directory as the blend file and place the textures inside. The model supports GLTF format export, and you can choose the corresponding format according to the texture you bake. In UV settings, you can choose to automatically create UV or use a UV named Simple Bake for baking. Since I have already organized my UV, I use the default settings. In other settings, you can choose to use CPU or GPU for baking. Foreground and background allow you to choose whether to bake in the foreground or background. OK, the entire setup is complete. Before baking, Change the filmic to standard for the most original colors and the baked result. Exposure, gamma, and use curves are post-processing settings that do not affect the final baking result. Finally, check the normals of the model. If there are normals facing inward, it may result in dark results like this. Okay, all settings are complete. Click Bake. If you see these messages, it means baking has started. Soon, the first model will be baked. It follows a specific order, baking each one and combining the textures. At this point, it's best not to manipulate Blender further, as it may cause baking errors or interruptions. All you have to do is wait. If your models can be merged, it can be baked in one go. Since I am using procedural textures, the result changes after merging, so I need to bake them one by one. Let's fast forward through this process. As you can see, the textures baked by each model are merged into one texture, which is really a powerful add-in. Okay. The entire process took about 5 minutes. Afterwards, I used the same method to bake the ground. Once all baking is complete, I got two textures in the specified path. And then, I will apply these two textures to the models. Merge all house models. Delete all materials, create a new material, and assign the bake texture to it. 
Set render pass to diffuse color, you can see the final effect. Perform the same operation on the ground. Okay, it's done. All textures and lighting have been baked onto the textures. This is a powerful baking add-in, showcasing just a small portion of its capabilities. If you watched my previous video about merging textures, you can forget about it. This add-in provides a more convenient and faster way to achieve the same goals. This is the entire content of this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.